Namaskar, I am Dr. Anshu Jindal from Jindal Hospital, Meerut. Today we are going to talk about IVF pregnancies. I know these pregnancies are very high risk pregnancies. They are more prone to abortions, more prone to first trimester bleeding, more prone to subchorionic hemorrhage and fresh transfer IVF pregnancies are also more prone to small for dates as they are more prone to PIH, pregnancy induced hypertension. These high risk pregnancies are very precious pregnancies because there is no room for any errors in your obstetrical management. And today we have none other than Dr. Professor Anjali Tempe to give us her views on how to manage these IVF pregnancies. Professor Anjali Tempe is a director professor and ex-head of the Department of Obs and Gynae at Molana Azad Medical College, my alma mater. She is the IVF in charge in the same institute. She has been the medical superintendent of the maternal and child health wing at Lok Naik Hospital from 2016 to 2019. She has received the Delhi State Award for Distinguished Medical Services in 2013. She has so many publications to her credit, 51 publications, 33 book chapters and more than 200 presentations. So let's hear what she has to say about IVF pregnancy. Dr. Anshu Jindal has been a student of Malagaza and with us she has worked. She has asked me to talk about five tips of for successful pregnancy outcome in IVF. So I have divided it in five points. First of all, any successful uh, endeavor needs a good start. Athletics or uh, marathon needs a good start. So our start would be right protocol choosing, right embryo transfer that is fresh transfer versus frozen. Phase. Fresh is always a better for successful outcome. Third is choosing maternal age below 40. And fourth is, uh, according to one study, if you get 14 days after ovulation, beta ICG level of more than 600 milli international unit per ml, this would definitely be a, a resulting in a life. Then there is also preparation of the patient, which is uh, all uterine factors and medical factors are to be controlled. Example being medical disorder is uh, diabetes, mellitus or hypertension control and uh, uterine factor or gynecological problems being uh, the hydrosulfings, the endometriosis or the fibroid, these are to be treated prior to IV. So this was the first point, good start. Second point is clinical monitoring about which I will not discuss much. Everybody knows that two to four weekly intervals patient should be seen and you all know about it. Third is ultrasound monitoring. Ultrasound monitoring will be at six to seven weeks for presence of cardiac activity. Then at 11 to 14 weeks to rule out amyloidies. Then at 18 to 22 weeks for structural anomaly scan. And finally at uh, 30, 28 to 30 weeks with doctor, fetal doctor. Um, and uh, growth chart. So this is third point was ultrasound monitoring. Fourth is prevention of complications. That means starting from first semester, prevent ectopics by doing hydrosulfines clipping prior to early. Prevent early and uh, mid trimester uh, uh, fetal loss by detecting aneuploidies and taking care of survival factors and nutrient factors, microbial uh, infections. Uh, then preventing multiple pregnancy, one third of the IVA pregnancies are multiple pregnancies, so choosing to transfer single good blastosis would prevent these complications or two blastosis in India, but multiple pregnancies are okay for the patients, however they are associated with a lot of problems. So prevent as far as possible. So this fourth point is prevention of complication. Fifth is adjuvant medical therapy. So in addition to normal antenatal drugs, we give uh, folic acid to prevent and is you know that relative defects. Second is aspirin, role of aspirin from 14 weeks onwards to prevent 
later on adverse pregnancy outcome in a selected patient and finally progesterone as and when required or in some patients still 28 to 30 weeks so that patient does not go in fever. So these are my five tips. First, uh, again I will repeat, good start, second clinical monitoring, third ultrasound monitoring, fourth prevention of complications and fifth is adjuvant treatment. Sixth point would be a good delivery. We leave it to the patient. She chooses a vaginal delivery. Then one-to-one -one doctor patient ratio should be there. Then only you can allow you know, such a high risk pregnancy or vaginal delivery. Otherwise, go for cesarean at the appropriate gestation. Thank you very much. I'm sure you heard Professor Anjali Tempe talk about how to manage these very difficult high risk IVF pregnancies and a lot of your doubts would have been allayed today. I would just like to sum up by saying that these IVF pregnancies, especially the frozen embryo transfer IVF pregnancies, they have less chances of biochemical pregnancies as well as ectopic pregnancies. They have lesser incidence of preterm delivery. In fact, some of these pregnancies are large for dates. Frozen embryo transfer also gives us a chance to do a pre-implantation genetic diagnosis testing if required in some patients. So if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to our channel Global ART Forum so that we can bring you more such videos in the future. Thank you.